Hello everybody. Um, I would like to talk to you a little bit today about uniform circular motion. Um, in our book, it's chapter 10, it's called Circular Motion. Technically speaking, uniform circular motion is when an object moves around a circle at nearly constant speed or at constant speed. Let's talk quickly about what is what makes this uniform? What is uniform? Is anything changing or not? And what's special about this type of motion? And lastly, we'll do the sample problem um, that's on the front of the uniform circular motion introduction classwork that you got on the 5th of January class. For this object, this ball going around the circle, the string length, the radius of, well, the length of the string isn't changing. And the length of the string defines the radius of the circle. This length, this chord length, is the radius of that circle. So the radius is constant. I already told you that we define UCM, or uniform circular motion, to involve moving at constant speed. So if, if, if it's going around the circle at a constant speed, the time it takes to go around the circle once, that is also the same. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The ball passes my hand in the same time interval each cycle or, or, or revolution, we might call it. So we have, we have some things that are constant. We have the radius is constant. We have the speed being constant, and we have the time for one cycle around the circle constant. There's a name for that. There's a special name in physics for the time over which a re repeated inner, uh, the time over which something that happens over and over again that cycles around and around, and it's called the period. And because it's a special time, not just any time, we give it a capital T rather than little t, which we usually used for the elapsed time. But because this is a special time called the period, we give it a capital T. Um, many things have a period. A pendulum oscillating back and forth turns out to have a period. Um, a guitar string that's been plucked and it oscillates at a particular frequency has a particular period. Anything, a planet that, that orbits uh, the, the sun or its, its, its star, anything that, that cycles over and over again in the same amount of time is said to be periodic and have a period. Um, okay. I'd like to talk to you about the velocity. The speed is constant, but there's something going on with the velocity that I'd like to chat with you about. So we have a circular path here, and let's, let's uh, identify the center and, and draw a radius. Um, let's say that this, this red line represents the string, um, and this ball, this red ball, um, <clears throat> the wiffle ball, as, as an object is moving in a circular path. And for the sake of argument, let's just say it's going clockwise. Sometimes you'll hear us use the term tangential velocity um, to describe the speed as the object moves around, or the velocity as the object moves around that circle. If this object is moving clockwise, then the velocity at this instant is a tangent line to the circle. Um, I'm just going to draw this with some arbitrary length. But that represents the velocity of the object at that instant. You'll notice that the tangent line makes a right angle with the radius, as all tangent lines do. Um, OK. So let's fast forward the, the tape, so to speak, just a, a millisecond or two later. And this object is no longer here. It's moving clockwise around the circle. And maybe at this instant, right now, the object is here. Now, 
we said that there are things that are constant in uniform circular motion, like speed, period, the radius of the circle. And the speed is indeed constant. But velocity, you will recall, is not just speed. Velocity includes the speed an object has and the direction in which that speed acts. If I were to draw this velocity vector at this moment right here, again, we're going to draw a tangent line, tangent to the circle. And I'm trying to draw this about the same length that I did this. If, I, if I've gone a little long, my apologies there. But the velocity one at time one and the velocity two at time two have the same magnitude. The length of the vector is the same. The speed is the same because the length of this is the speed. But you'll notice it points in a different direction. This velocity points this way. And this velocity points straight down in a different direction. This was something I had trouble in high school understanding. I thought to myself that acceleration meant only speeding up or only slowing down. But acceleration, of course, is defined to be the, a vector quantity who has direction and is the change in velocity over the change in time. And when I, I truly graduated from high school not really grasping that an object which is solely changing its direction, an object that's moving in a circle, for example, while it may not be speeding up, or slowing down, it is constantly accelerating because it is changing its direction. Furthermore, we know that you know a hockey puck sitting moving on ice with no force acting on it will not move in a circle. I never thought about it that way at the time, but but now I think about it that way. Like we know Newton's first law. The law of inertia states that an object that is not being subject to any forces will either stay at rest or move in a straight line at a constant speed. An object which is moving in a circle is most certainly not moving at a straight line, even if its speed is constant. And so an object that's undergoing uniform circular motion is undergoing constant acceleration. I'll show you later in a different video that that acceleration is toward the center of the circle, but we'll get to there in a little bit. I'd like to finish this video by doing the sample problem, which will help us highlight the equations of uniform circular motion. Those equations are in the notes. You were given these notes on the 5th of January today. Um, so let's just, let's go over that sample problem. Here's the sample problem real quick. Um, you'll see that this is at the bottom of the document called Uniform Circular Inter Motion Intro Class Work. A 0.35 kilogram tennis ball, that's its mass, is attached, is tied to a 0 0.80 meter cord and swung in a horizontal circle at a constant speed. Now that the length of that cord, that 0 0.80 meters, is the radius of this circle. I tried to draw this picture and I hope it's helpful. Um, first of all, is the ball accelerating? If you look at the solutions I posted on Canvas, I said yes, it is accelerating. Um, anytime you're, you're changing your velocity, Anytime you're changing your direction, you're changing your velocity, regardless of whether your speed is changing. And that is what acceleration is, change in velocity. Um, again, we're going to talk more about this, but the acceleration is toward the center. Now we have a little quantitative question. If the, let's assume the tennis ball travels around the circle twice each second. Find the period, the speed, the acceleration. And then the last one is the force. So the period of the, acceler of the motion is what we call capital T, the period. 
And that's the time for one cycle. It's the number of seconds in, divided by the number of cycles. We're told that it, that it makes two trips around the circle in one second. So the number of seconds is one, and the number of cycles in that second is two cycles. And of course, one divided by two is a half. So the period is 0.5 seconds. We might say per cycle, but period is typically understood to mean the time for one cycle. So you don't express it as seconds per cycle. Typically, you just say it's 0.5 seconds. What's the speed? Well, we all know that speed is distance divided by time. When, when the speed is constant, we use our constant velocity formula, V equals X over T, and, and that gives us our speed. But the distance around a circle is a special distance. It's actually called the circumference. And the time it takes to go around that circle is a special time. It's called the period. So with, with that substitution for distance, the circumference, and that substitution for time, the period, we end up with the circumference, which is 2 pi r. We learned that, of course, in middle school. Um, and the period we've already said is capital T. So plugging in those values, 2 pi times the radius, which is the length of the string, over the period, which we saw was 0.5 seconds, notice the units are meters per second, we get a value of 10.05 meters per second. I might round that off to 10. Um, it's, I, I think I had two sig figs everywhere, so I could say 1.0 times 10 to the one, but I'm just gonna call that 10, okay? Let's just leave it at that. What's the ball's acceleration? Um, some of you would like to maybe see this equation derived. At the moment, I'm not going to derive it. I'm just going to tell you that when an object is moving in circular motion, the acceleration is sometimes called centripetal, often called centripetal acceleration. And it's simply equal to the square of the speed divided by the radius. A is V squared over R. The second equation on this back side of the notes. With plugging in the 10.05 meters per second and not forgetting to square it and dividing by the radius, we get a value of 126.33 meters per second squared, and I might round that off to 130. You can't really see question D, but question D asks, what is the force required to keep the ball moving around this circle at this speed? The force, which is again, typically referred to as a centripetal force, just like any force, it's equal to ma, in this case, ma centripetal, a sub c. Um, but we know a sub c is v squared over r. So I can rewrite mac as m times v squared over r, because that's what ac is, or mv squared over r. Plugging in our values, 0.35, 10.05 squared, divided by 0.8, we'll find that the answer comes out to be 44.2 newtons. You should make sure you can do this because it doesn't really get any um, more difficult than this, and we want to make sure everyone is able to, to achieve um, the problem set
equally well. I hope this short video was helpful in talking about what uniform circular motion is, why the velocity is constantly changing, why that means it's accelerating, and a little bit of problem solving to help us build our, our, our math skills around this chapter. Thanks so much and, and we'll see you back in class soon.